Hello, this is Marcus Printer. We're going to talk about improvisation. I'm going to give you a quote from one of my heroes. I had the honor of meeting him when I was in 10th grade, I think it was. It was the great Dizzy Gillespie. And a quote that the great Dizzy Gillespie said in his book, To Be or Not to Bop, is, quote, a prerequisite to playing jazz is learning the piano, end quote. And I'm not a great piano player, but I can get around the piano enough just to outline chords, you know, like for blues. Okay. Now, what I want to recommend to, um, to all of you is to try to find a teacher. I can sit and talk about this all day long, but just try to find a teacher just to show you voicings, like basic voicings to, to, to blues, to, to tunes. That's the first step, get a teacher. And the reason why I think you should learn piano is so you can outline chords. If I'm playing a tune, let's say, let's say I'm playing All the Things You Are. If I'm playing a tune and I don't know what the chord progression is, or, the, or just to outline the chords, like the root, third, and fifth, and seventh at least, I'm not going to know what to play. I'm just going to use my ears. And that's okay as well, but you want to really know just the whole theory behind playing piano. This, this Gillespie loved piano players. You know, he loved hanging out with Monk and um, Bud Powell. He would show them things as well, but they would show him like certain voices that they would use, and he was just like, he's very studious at the piano. So it's very important to learn voicings, get a teacher to, to teach you voicing so you can learn how to play. For instance, if I'm playing that f the tune I just mentioned, I'm going to kind of go off track here. If I'm playing All the Things You Are, first chord is the F minor 7 chord. If I'm outlining the root 3rd, 5th, and 7th, it's um, the F, the A flat, the C, and the E flat. Then And so on. So basically what I was doing is playing those, those chords and outlining the root, which is the first note of the scale, the third, which is the third note of the scale, the third degree of the scale, and the fifth and the seventh. And in most cases here, these were dominant chords. It's a dominant seventh. There's a few major sevenths as well. Getting back to the blues, if I'm playing, let's see, let's, uh, let's stay in, in the key of B flat. This is the one chord, it's a B flat chord. Is a concert F. Five, then back to the four, E flat, then back to the one. In rhythm, that sounds like this one, two, three, four. That's just one form of playing the blues. Now, if I were to do the root, third, and fifth, and seventh with that, it would sound like I can also play the blues and use and change the form, well not the form, it's going to still be 12 bars, but I can change the chords around. So maybe I'll make it a little snazzy and, and do this. Okay. Now, I can still apply that root third and fifth and seventh to that. It's going to be a little harder for me to sing and play at the same time, but let's let's see how it works out. So here we go. One, 
two, one, two, three. If you're thorough about learning your chord changes, learning the root, how to outline the root, third, fifth, and seventh of any chord you play, of any tune you play, it's going to make playing um, a solo much easier. So be really thorough and learn the music and you'll be okay. <laughs>